This is Kutztown Live. Kutztown University's campus and community issues talk radio magazine. You can listen back to any of our episodes of Kutztown Live by going to Spotify and searching Kutztown University Radio. And now, your hosts of Kutztown Live. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome to Kutztown Live. I'm your host, as always, DJ Aaron B. I am joined by my wonderful bi-weekly guest, Lori, from the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce. How are you this week, Lori? I'm fine, Aaron. Or should I say, DJ Aaron. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I, got, I got my DJ name uh, said right. by someone else other than me now. <laughs> well, as always, I'm happy to be sitting here in the studio with a special guest from the Northeast Berks Chamber. But before I introduce my guest today, I'd like to talk about what's coming up at the Chamber. And remember that all of our activities are open to the public. So whether you're a member or considering membership, you're always welcome to participate in our special breakfast meetings, events, networking activities, and so forth. Coming up in March, during Entrepreneurship Week here at Kutztown University, the Chamber will be involved in two of the programs that have been uh, organized for that week. First, on Wednesday, March 18th, from 11 till 1 p.m. in the McFarland Student Union, we will be hosting for the fourth consecutive year the Women's Entrepreneurship Panel. In fact, my guest today is one of the panelists. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes. We're very excited to partner with Kutztown University College of Business and present a program with six women entrepreneurs. Again, this is open to the public and it's free of charge, as are all programs that are organized for Entrepreneurship Week. For more information about the entire week's schedule of special keynote speakers, panels, and other forums, go to kutztown.edu and search for Entrepreneurship Week. Also that week on Friday, March 20th, will be our monthly breakfast meeting that will also, in this instance, be hosted by Kutztown University, our partner and sponsor. And the Family Business Panel will be the featured presentation for our regular business meeting. You have to register, although there's no fee, uh, for both programs, the Women's Entrepreneurship Panel and the Breakfast Meeting. And you can go to our Northeast Berks Chamber website at northeastberkschamber.com to find the registration links for both of those programs. Let me introduce today my special guest. Her name is Maleva Epperson Langle. I love her first name. It's so unique. I've never met anyone with that name. I think you're probably the only person with that name, Maleva. And her business is Makeup by Maleva. She is a new entrepreneurial member of the chamber. She joined in the fall of 2019. She's a makeup artist. Uh, she does custom one-on-one -on -one consulting with men and women. She also does special event makeup and so much more. Welcome to the show, Maleva. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. It is. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started and got involved in the makeup industry? Sure. Well, that's actually a funny story. I went to school, uh, university in New York for film production, and I happened to just trip into makeup and stayed there. So in the film industry, uh, in college, homework is film and so we would make movies and I had a friend that asked me to do makeup special effects for his film he needed to make like one of his actors look like he got beat up and I looked at him like he had seven heads I was like why are you asking me to do this I barely wear makeup I don't know what I'm doing and he's like listen there's nobody else that can do that on the campus there wasn't like special effects makeup makeup for movies that wasn't uh, a thing and so I said well do you know what I have some friends in the theater department let me borrow a friend's theatrical makeup kit uh, let me look at some images and I'll get back to you. So I ended up recreating somewhat like a beat up look on myself and he loved it. And so I ended up doing that for his film. And once word got out there that there was someone on campus that did makeup, everybody was asking me to do makeup for their student films. And I still had no idea what I was doing. Well, you were a natural though. I right? guess so. Yeah. So I ended up um, meeting with one of my film professors who offered to do an independent study so I could 
design special effect ma effects makeup with the camera, with the lighting, kind of recreate my own sets. And then from there, when I graduated and moved back to the area, I got my first freelance gig uh, doing makeup for a music video. I kind of maybe fudged a resume a little bit <laughs> and I ended up getting the job. And since then, it's literally been every single person that I've met that's taken me onto a new set that invited me to a new production. And pretty soon I had a blossomy makeup career. So I was like, hey, maybe I'll, I'll stick with it. Well, now you're not only experienced, but you're very talented. And I know firsthand that you've done my makeup twice. And I you, have. you're excellent. You, you really know what you're doing. Well, I mean, I you. think it's interesting that, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, women, business women want to present themselves in the best light possible. And some of us have been using the same products and the same techniques for the last three or four decades. <laughs> and so it's good to break out of that and have a person like you teach us how to apply makeup and again, to use some different techniques and, and, and let us know what kind of tools to use. Now, talk about a little bit about what you've done recently in terms of makeup. And by the way, if someone's interested in a consultation or even bridal or event makeup, how can they get a hold of you, Maleva? Uh, that's an excellent question. So I'm on all of the social media platforms. On Facebook, you can find me at Maleva F. Epperson Langle. Um, actually, I think it's Langle and the Epperson's in parentheses because apparently that's what you do when you get married. <laughs> I'm also on Instagram at Maleva's Motive, M-O-T-I-V-E. And you can also email me at Maleva's Motive at yahoo.com. So what are some of your more recent makeup projects that you could tell us about? Sure. So more recently, I've entered in a new phase of my business. While I love doing feature film and a lot of corporate commercial work, uh, I've been doing a lot of consulting for women in business, which you mentioned. I'm really excited about this new phase because for me, I've been doing a lot of traveling and that was wonderful in my 20s, but now in my early 30s settle down, I'm looking to start a family, and I needed to do something that was still in my home base, but that still filled me up um, and added value to others. And so I really love doing the consulting for women in business because like you said, I find that there are kind of two sides of the coin. You have one side, which you discussed, where people using the same techniques and the same products for decades because that's just what they know and they've kind of stuck with that and they don't really know how to change into today's world of makeup. Um, but then I also have a category of women that are looking at social media and there are a lot of beauty influencers now and they're really overwhelmed by that. And so I think there's kind of this new perception of what makeup is supposed to be, which isn't necessarily the case. And so I'm looking to take the overwhelm out of someone's beauty routine. And so that's what I really like to do is sit down and figure out how much time does someone have? Uh, what products are they using? Maybe let's figure out what the missing pieces are so we can create a routine that they feel confident with that is also you know, gonna save them some time and money. I think that's really the most valuable because time is at a premium and you know people have children and very busy jobs and other activities. So they don't have a lot of time to devote to makeup in the morning, but they still wanna look their best. If you had to leave the listeners with maybe one or two strategies that a person could do on a daily basis, men or women, um, to keep their face looking fresh and moist and you know whatever is, is, is expected of a face as it ages, what would those strategies be? Oh, that is an excellent question. I have so many. I think the biggest one is that great skin starts in our gut because um, whatever's going on in our gut is showing up on our skin. So having an excellent supplement regimen, I really highly recommend like digestive enzymes, probiotics, um, just a few things to keep our gut healthy. Aloe is also um, an incredible product for that because um, we want to support our skin from the inside out. Topically, a big, big um, thing of mine, which sounds so basic, but wash your face <laughs> like morning and night. Uh, I spoke recently and I always like to creep people out with this, but we have fun little mites that live on our face called the Demodex mite. Um, and they love to eat all of the oils in our skin and they're your bugs and that's fine, but we really need to be washing our skin on a regular basis to ensure that we have nice healthy skin, especially as we get older, especially if time is of the essence for you and you really don't wanna take a lot of time in your routine to put on makeup. I feel like the better our skin looks and the more youthful and fresh it looks, the less we have to do to cover imperfections. Um, and so washing the face morning, noon, and night, having a solid skincare routine is an essential um, like cornerstone of a great beauty routine. Well, 
I heard you speak about four weeks ago about the mites, and I have religiously been washing my face ever <laughs> since. So I love that your first strategy is that it comes from the inside out, because that really is uh, a critical part of keeping your skin, as you said, youthful and fresh. Uh, tell us again how we can get a hold of you if we're interested in talking to you about makeup uh, or video production or even an inspirational talk. Absolutely. So on Facebook, I'm Maleva F. Langle, in a parentheses, Epperson. Um, and then my branding on social media through Instagram and Twitter and other platforms is at Maleva's Motive, M-A-L-E-E-V-A-S-M-O-T-I-V-E. -E -E. Then you can also email me at Yahoo at Maleva's Motive at Yahoo.com. Now, Maleva, before we close, why don't you tell us just a few other activities or groups that you're involved with? Uh, when you're not working. Sure, absolutely. Well, one group that I'm very proud of is I'm the co-chair of Burke's Women in Motion with my dear friend Elizabeth Hafer of EB Designs. That's something that we've recently taken over in the past few months. And it is an incredible networking group for women, not just to be women in motion in business and in our lives, but also women in motion in the community. So we meet every third Tuesday at um, Third and Spruce for lunch, but we also have a Facebook group. We have so many different volunteer and community projects that we volunteer with uh, and a bunch of different roundtable discussions. So there's a lot that we have going on in the year of 2020 with Burke's Women in Motion. You can find us on Facebook through that group, Burke's Women in Motion. Another um, group that I'm really proud of, I love working with the Reading Civic Theater. We do a lot of incredible productions, and just recently I was their lead in Mamma Mia at the Santander Performing Arts Center. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they have incredible productions, uh, especially professional considering, you know, it's community theater. A lot of great volunteers come together to just pursue their passion of theater and performance. And so they regularly have two shows a year. And we also have a lot of upcoming fun master classes and performances. So there are going to be a lot of other great opportunities you have available to see Reading Civic Theater in motion in the community. Well, we're very proud to have you in the Northeast Berks Chamber. Again, if you're interested in getting in contact with Maleva, you can also find her at the northeastberkschamber.com website uh, and also in our digital directory, which is published on the website. Thank you, Maleva. Thank you. This was such an incredible opportunity. I appreciate it. Well, Lori and Maleva, both of you, thank you so much for coming on. And Lori, you never fail to bring in someone interesting every other week. I am very impressed. Our chamber is <laughs> filled with interesting members. <laughs> it's true. It, it is. I, I, I now believe you know, seeing this bi-weekly now. It, it's uh, a diverse group, right? It, it very much is. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. again, thank you so much for coming on. Stay with us right here on Kutztown Live. We will be back with an interview from a representative from the Kutztown Firehouse. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host, as always, DJ Aaron B. And I am joined by Meredith Ake from the Kutztown Fire Company Social Quarters. How are you today? Uh, uh, what, what was that again? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. How are you doing? I, I'm fantastic. Sorry about that. Thank you. Now, um, you guys have an event coming up. Can you tell me about that? We do. We have an open mic night coming up on March 6th at 8 p.m. We are being joined by Harry Foster. And we do a lot of events at the Kutztown Fire Company, um, music especially. And if you come out and would love to, we would love to have you guys out or whoever. It can be solo. It can be whatever you guys have out there. And we would love um, to hear you guys come out and hopefully book you for the rest of the semester or for the upcoming semester because we have live music two to three times a month on the weekends and on Wednesday nights we always have live music going on. Very, very cool. Now, you know, we're, we're, we're on a college campus. A lot, a lot of people who listen to this show are students. Do you guys uh, have any student-specific events ever? Um, we try to do them at least once a month. Um, 
starting recently. Um, you come in and uh, when we have events uh, once a month or twice a month, um, it's not posted right this second, but in March we are doing a open membership drive. So if you come out um, and bring friends or whatever, we are going to do bowling on the third weekend of March, open bowling, and come out and sign up to become a member. Um, there will be food, and um, we have arcade games, pool tables, jukebox, um, a lot of things that are specifically meant for a younger crowd. Okay. Now, can you, can you tell me a little more about the uh, social quarters uh, itself? Uh, so, the social quarters is actually a nonprofit organization. Um, downstairs, we have a bowling lane. It's a restaurant. Um, we have our gate, arcade games and, like I said before, a pool table. Um, all our money that is made is supporting the actual firefighters for Kutztown, the truck crew. Um, and that money that we uh, revenue throughout the year um, always gets put to the safety of Kutztown. That, that's awesome. Now, uh, this is located, it's, a, it's attached to the firehouse, right? That, that is correct. It is actually in the basement of the firehouse at 310 Noble Street. Um, it is right, like, right when you're um, going out of town towards Lyons. Okay. Yep. I, 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 know, I know that area. Got, had to go down to the old fiddle festival that way. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, are there any other like, specific events that you wanted to promote while you were here? Um, this weekend, we are doing Mardi Gras. We have three bands coming in um, from 8 to 12 on Saturday. We have Marvelous Marv and the Shoe Throwers, the Posers, and Miriam Clancy coming in. Um, it'll be a great event. We're having uh, Cajun food and Ooh. lots of drink specials. And then also in March on the 28th, we are having Honky Tonk Medics. And that is um, a very country band, but they're awesome. Well, that just sounds fantastic. And hey, if you can't make it down to New Orleans for uh, Mardi Gras, there's uh, there's something going on right down, right on Noble Street. Make make sure you go check that out. Well, uh, Meredith, as we wrap up here, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, just come out and come out for a food special night, which is Tuesday through Saturday, and um, come in and enjoy some great atmosphere. <laughs> well. Meredith Ake from the Kutztown Fire Company Social Quarters, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Re really look forward to that Mardi Gras event this weekend. <laughs> thank you for having me. Uh, no problem. Make sure you stay right with us here on Kutztown Live for our weekly guest, Donovan, from the Keystone Newspaper. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host as always, DJ Aaron B. And I am joined by my weekly guest, Donovan Levine from the Keystone newspaper. How you doing this week, Donovan? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. What's going on at the Keystone this week? So this past week we covered um, a couple events. Um, I did a profile piece on um, a woman named uh, Sam Fairchild, and um, she's a senior right now, but she's going to be doing like the five-year plan because she has a senior internship. But basically, her story is that um, she's a published author. She's getting engaged this April, and she's also working full time at the. Um, she's like a uh, what's it called, like an emergency operator at the okay. Reading Police Department. So she just kind of had like a very like busy life and she's balancing between all these different things. And so I figured it'd be a cool thing to do a profile story on because I know a lot of people on campus who struggle so much with maintaining relationships, maintaining full-time jobs, maintaining school on top of all of that. So it was a cool story for, for her to share with me. Um, there was that. And then let me go back um, to the um, swim team had their uh, PSAC championships, KU swim team, which 
went pretty well. I interviewed the coach and um, Jocelyn site and um, they did they did pretty good. I believe them and East Stroudsburg made the bottom half of the top ten. So we covered that in sports. And then I believe for Freeform, we mostly focused I have one person writing a couple things about the election. I told you last week someone wrote um, an article in the Iowa caucus, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. And then someone else is going to be writing on just Bernie Sanders' campaign in general, because there's a student group called SFS, which is like Students for Sanders. So they'll be writing an article on that as well. Um, and I believe there's like other things in international news, mostly dealing with like coronavirus hitting like Italy or other places like that. Um, I'm not certain if we'll be covering that. And then I did hear Facebook is getting um, a federal tax liability like lawsuit, and it's like worth like fifteen billion dollars. I did dollars. hear about that. Yeah, I had I want to have someone write about that because it sounded pretty uh, sounded pretty serious. Um, and then there were other things. There's some A and E topics. Like I know the downhill movie. Someone's gonna do like a review about that. It was like Will Ferrell's new film. Um, they talked about the hot ones. The Better Call Saul season five premiere was last night. And then uh, my friend Sophia brought up this. There's a museum in Allentown where there's a Rembrandt painting that was like misattributed because people were saying that like, oh, this wasn't um, actually done by Rembrandt. It was kind of like a knockoff kind of thing. I covered that on my weird news segment. Last Did you? Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was talking about it because she was saying that they were actually the ones misinterpreting it because they said that they discovered the painting was actually a Rembrandt. But um, she was saying that it doesn't actually work like that, that sometimes like, when an artist, because I believe it was written, or excuse me, not written, <laughs> painted, like, around, like, it, it, it was, like, it, it was pre, like, 20th century, so it's, like, um, the way that they did things was weird. They had, like, academies, and, like, they had, like, people who, like, painted under them and things like that, mm -hmm. and so it could have been one of those guys who painted it under, like, Rembrandt's teaching, and so it would still get attributed to him and everything, so she just wanted to cover something on that, and then this upcoming week, there's a couple events. Dr. Ganster is doing a performance um, called Toward Morning, which is at the Miller Gallery, so that'll be happening. Um, there's a Caribbean festival for Black History Celebration and um, the MSU on, I believe, yeah, it's February 28th. And then next Wednesday, the governor of the state's going to be coming to the MSU as well. So oh. Those will be a few. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh <laughs> those will be a few events happening, so... Um, believe that's all that I had for Freeform and a &E. We don't have, like, too many, like, news coverage things, at least not that I was told about by our news editor, but that's what I had for my section. Um, and then, DJ, if you wanted to add anything to that. Yeah, just talk like right in front of it. So my name's DJ, and I handle recruitment and retention for the Keystone. So like Donovan said, um, we are looking for writers currently. We have a lot of stories that we'd like to be covered. And we're also open if anyone's interested in pitching any stories, anything they particularly want to write about. Um, so we're looking for writers. If anyone's interested, you can follow us on Instagram, Keystone at KU, or you can find us on Facebook at the Keystone. Um, that's pretty much it. And there you have it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well. Thank you so much for coming on this week. It, uh, again, it's always lovely having you here in the studio. I will see you next week for our next segment. You're, make sure you stay tuned right here with us on Kutztown Live. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. <laughs> You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host, as always, DJ Aaron B. And for our news segment of the show this week, I am joined again, like I was last week, by my by my happy hour co-host, DJ AC. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Are we going to record a happy hour episode soon? Maybe. <laughs> if we're not busy. We got all three hosts working on Kutztown Live right but now. Can't but can't do but happy we, hour. We cannot come together to do our own show. It's sad. We're just busy people. <laughs> But um, moving on to some news, Angela, you hear about you hear about the uh, Delaware water gap being on fire. 
I know, right? Kind of ironic. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's crazy. It's burned 80 acres of land. 80? Up at, yeah, in northern New Jersey, uh, all along the uh, New Jersey Parkway that runs right up there in New York. But uh, the fires have been mostly contained as of this morning, and about 95% of them were out. Uh, officials say that the damage was mostly limit to, limited to um, some undergrowth in Worthington State Forest and around the Water Gap Recreation Area. So did they, like, use the water to put it out, or...? You know, uh, the, the sources that I'm seeing don't actually say exactly how they put it out, but, you know, they might have just dropped some buckets into the Delaware and just hawked them right on there. Well, I mean, where's the nearest fire hydrant? I mean, you got a whole river there. That's true. <laughs> that's That's very true. The, uh, the cause of the fire is still inconclusive. Uh, no one is quite aware yet. Um, but moving on, you've heard, now, now you've had to have heard of this, right? The, the Philly fanatic getting a revamp? Yes. N yeah. yeah. I really thought you were talking about Gritty at first. I was like, wait a minute. No, Gritty's nah. fine. He's perfect. <laughs> I guess. But... But he's getting a new look? Yeah, the Philly Fanatic, after a, a long reign as an iconic mascot... Very long time. Uh, he, he has been... The Philly Fanatic was designed in the late 70s, and he, he has been the Phillies mascot ever since then. And now, after uh, all of those years, the contract has run up with the original designers of the Fanatic and the Philadelphia Phillies management. Like, if I'm correct, like, not most baseball teams have a mascot. Um, so it, I, I, I'm not, not that, a big not fan that, of the sport. So yeah, I not couldn't. that not that I know of. I'm like, <laughs> we're just all familiar with the Philly Fanatic because we live in Pennsylvania. I feel but like you, he's kind of iconic. Yeah, too. if you if you think of, if you think of the team like the Yankees, like what's their mascot? What's the <laughs> what's the Red Sox mascot? He, the, I'm pretty sure the Yankees mascot is just a guy with a big ball head. <laughs> it, oh, yeah, he just has the it baseball is. for the head. But like, do they do they even have a costume for that? Uh, I think, uh, he might just be in a Yankees uniform with that stupid baseball head. I guess, <laughs> but. The, the Phillies could not come to a contractual agreement with the original owners, and instead of uh, deciding to settle on that, they said, well, I'm going to go make a better Philly fanatic. I'm so, really eager to see how that turns out. It actually, they, they just revealed the design. Really? But, but, but we're, on, we're on radio, so I can't show it. And I, I wanted to cover this in the, the, local, uh, the local news uh, segment just because... The, the new fanatic, he is coming to Reading April 26th at First Energy Stadium to, uh, to support the old Reading Fight and Fills, the MLB minor league team for the Phillies. The revamped Philly fanatic will be there. So, you know, you can go check him out, go see him in person, go decide if, if it was really worth it. If the, if the Phillies doing a complete redesign of one of my favorite mascots was truly worth it. I, I, you know, I never really thought about it till now. Philly has two of the most terrifying mascots in the entire world. The the fanatic between the fanatic and gr gritty, I, I can kind of see why. You the, said you said he's coming to Reading April twenty sixth. Yeah, according to, according to my sources, he was first seen April twenty fifth. So I guess it's like a birthday. Oh no! Or some sort of anniversary. Oh, well, maybe maybe that maybe that was the original fanatic's birthday. Maybe, maybe it's special. Possibly. But a, a little bit of super local news, like 20 minutes right down the, down the road. The former mall, the Fairground Square, 40,000 square feet of the mall is being demolished. Now, if you know Fairgrounds Square a little bit, a, a little bit shy of 20 minutes outside of Kutztown, that is, uh, there's the Fairgrounds Square Mall there. Most of the shops on the inside are closed. Most of the mall is abandoned. There's still the, uh, I, I guess what I, I would call our, our local big theater is the AMC over there in Fairgrounds. And uh, that, that is remaining open alongside with the Burlington, the Baja Beach Tanning Club, and the Planet Fitness. The, the true important icon... icon of fees i i can't say i can't yeah. speak today i can't do it but they are staying open but most of the mall is being demolished they do not have they have not announced any further plans for the space they have just announced the demolition so 
that that'll look kind of weird because I I know at least the the movie theater is literally attached to like the, the a part of the mall that you can see into. So when when you're in the movie theater, you just see like sad abandoned we, mall. We sure do. We sure do get excited about demolition. I mean, remember the the tower in Bethlehem? Yeah, everyone was super excited about that. I, I feel like that one was a lot to do with it being like a tower, though. Like how many towers we got around here? <laughs> Not many. Yeah, that that was definitely a weird building. I didn't even know it existed until I heard it was getting knocked down. I mean, I'm not from this area, so it was news. Yeah. Speaking of not being from this area and not actually understanding something until oh, no. I saw it multiple times, I, I wasn't going to cover this story until I saw that literally every source I looked at covered this in one way or another, but the Easton Baking Company has reopened, and they they ran out of baked goods on their first day from the, the amount of people who... Uh, <laughs> who came in the the oh, store wow. closed down in uh 2018 and they they just now recently reopened this week and they and they they opened uh they opened yesterday and they they closed about like five hours into it because they ran out of all twelve thousand donuts that they made for that day so I, I guess we're missing out on something. I think we are. <laughs> I guess we got to get down to Easton because uh, apparently, uh, apparently the, these are to to die for. If people are uh, buying fifteen thousand donuts in in a few hours, that's that's very impressive. But that that about wraps it up for local news. In some overarching national news, with the primary going on, the last primary that happened caucus technically last thursday in nevada was won by senator bernie sanders and that is going into the super tuesday election where i believe 12 states will cast their votes for who they believe should be the democratic primary make sure if you are a registered democrat you're checking out the debate that is on tonight on abc make sure you are well versed in the candidates opinions how they are in general you got to be a informed voter in 2020 it's a very important thing uh, another thing i wanted to touch on real quick is that the white house is seeking 2.5 billion dollars for coronavirus fighting now uh the the white house went to congress with this earlier today and the the coronavirus obviously has now killed over 2600 people in China and the and people obviously in the United States especially are worried because we're we're, we're a little bit known to overreact to things especially in the internet age when we get can get all of our info so quick so this 2.5 billion it would be going towards the cdc f for them to develop a vaccine and support the current americans that are infected with the disease make sure they get out of this okay house speaker nancy pelosi said that this is an inadequate response to the coronavirus and that we should be adding at least another 1.5 billion to that it, it is up for heavy debate in congress as in as most things are nowadays and we will see the results from that soon now i'm um, that about wraps it up for regular news but coming up when we're done from this break we'll get to my new segment which i started last week that weekly weird news that i don't know if i'm going to keep that name yet but <laughs> We'll see you right after the break. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host as always, DJ Aaron B. And welcome to our new segment, which I started last week. Uh, I, I, I decided I, want, I wanted to have a little bit more fun with the parts of the show that I'm not doing interviews. And I, I already do news coverage in that time anyway. So I decided to put a, a fun little spin on it. We got weekly weird news now. And to start off the show today, I am I am sad to report to the flat earth community that Daredevil and 
hard flat earther Mad Mike Hughes has unfortunately died in a fatal rocket crash after he had launched his homemade rocket off of on his property to go up into the stratosphere take images and prove once and for all that the earth was flat now this did not work out when mad mike launched his rocket the parachute decided to detach and he did not come down with any any sort of additional parachute so his rocket crashed right into the ground and he he was killed on february 22nd mad mike he was he was a very big figure in the flat earth community he uh he, he's been doing this actually for a while this this whole launching a rocket to try to take pictures of the flat earth he, he's been doing this for about uh six years now and he, he's been developing these these homemade rockets he's launched them before he's he's actually survived other crashes of these rockets before but no, not this time. Uh, obviously, Mad Mike. He was. Uh, he was not very. He was not a astrophysicist. He was actually a, a daredevil by by trade. He was a daredevil before he started doing this, and I, I guess you could argue he was a daredevil right up until the end. So rest in peace to Mad Mike. It is a. It is truly a loss for the flat Earth community. But moving on from Mad Mike. A Utah man accused of a Utah man was accused of releasing rodents in his hotel room to get free stays. Now, now this guy, he he was um he he uh, apparently uh, travels a lot for business, and he he was caught. He, he would go to a pet store. He would go buy like a hamster or a rat or a mouse or something. And he, he would just release it in, in whatever hotel room he was staying in that night. And, uh, he you know, he, he would complain. They, they'd comp his room, and uh, the bandit would go off and go do it at another motel. Um, but the, I, I guess you could argue that this is, this is a pretty smart way to get a hotel room. I, I guess that's uh, pretty efficient. I, I don't know how long you could expect it to go on for before you got caught. I, I feel like... Especially if you used to like if you use the same like hotel chain twice, they'd be like, "Hey, you're you're the, you're the rat guy. You you had a rat in your other room. You're a uh, you're you're a shady fellow, aren't you?" But this man, he he was caught in uh, Salt Lake City at a at a Hyatt, and uh, that this was this was actually um the, this was this was the man's fir first cr criminal offense ever. He he had never he had never committed a crime before this, and I, I'm glad he decided to make it a cool one when when he finally did. I, it was a good idea, really really sticking it to big hotel chain, my guy. Uh, moving on to another article: cats are wearing coronavirus masks in China. Now, <laughs> as I was reporting on earlier, the coronavirus has now killed 2,600 people in mainland China. So it is unfortunately, it, even though it, it is not a serious ec epidemic here in the United States, it truly is in China. Everyone there is locked in their homes pretty much, cannot go out in the streets. It, it's a, it is not a good time to be alive. And people are making sure to protect their pets as well. I, I've, been se I've been seeing these uh, all over Twitter. It is, it, it is just full like face masks that a human would wear. And they, they just cut out little eye holes for, for their cats or their... I, I haven't actually seen any uh, pictures of dogs do, uh, having this done. But um, plenty of cats now walking around China with uh, face masks on to cover themselves from the coronavirus. Hopefully keeps these kitties safe. They, they deserve to keep trudging on just like the rest of us. So hopefully these masks help. And hopefully the masks are helping the actual citizens of China as well. Moving on, tech reporter stranded after driving out a cell phone range in app-powered smart car. Now, I didn't even know this was a thing. There are there are actually um, car rental services that completely rely on on your phone for them to work. Um, I was aware of those kind of apps like Toro, where you can go on and you can like rent. You don't have to go through one of those rental companies like Hertz. 
uh, you can just go straight to someone who has their car listed, rent it for a certain amount of time, and that's it. But with uh, with some of with some of this technology, I guess there it's just completely keyless. Your your car is just activated by the Bluetooth on your smartphone. It recognizes that you you have the app and you paid for it, and that did not work here. Uh, a man named Carrie Paul, uh, who was working for a company, Gig Car, to test out their new service that works like how I just described. Uh, he went out for a drive up in the northern California mountains, decided to park his gig car at the top of the mountain, walk around, take in the sights. But he and he went in and uh, he, he realized that he could not even unlock the car. He, he had locked the car and he noticed that he had no cell service and could not bring up the app and he was stranded out there for eight hours now the with the the way these cars work apparently the the keys are actually they're just totally not involved like they're they're locked in the glove box of the vehicle uh for the duration of while you have the car rented it is completely reliant on your phone having cell service and i i would imagine with that lte service and I, I guess that is not something that Carrie Paul and Incorporated uh, thought about, and they were stranded up there for a full eight hours. That that does not sound like a fantastic time. Moving on to I think I think my favorite headline in general: Man with crime paste tattoo on forehead is arrested again after police chase. Now. I, I guess uh, old Donald Murray with the crime pays tattoo on his forehead. I, I guess he the, this is the time that he learns that it it won't it won't pay. He he uh, he led officers on uh, about a ten mile chase. Wow, uh, the, this man funny, funnily enough he he has he has been on uh, one one of my favorite shows Live PD before. He, he is a veteran of the show. He has been on. Um, yeah, he, he has been featured on there for uh, doing the same thing, actually, leading officers on a high-speed chase. And he had the tattoo back then, too. So I, I, guess, I guess this second time is not the time he's going to learn his lesson. Uh, I, uh, unless he, crime has paid him many times, and this, this is just the two times he's gotten caught. Maybe he's that kind of guy. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but... He is caught, and he will be going to prison with crime pays on his forehead. And that's that's kind of impressive. I, I, I would think that's kind of cool. And for our final headline of the day, Mark Zuckerberg gets employees to blow dry his armpit, claims new book. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, if, if, you've, never, if you've never seen him speak, he, he seems like uh, quite the awkward man. He doesn't... He, uh, he he doesn't speak very very fluently doesn't doesn't have a lot of charisma uh, a lot of people liken it to an alien not trying to replicate how humans speak and uh, I could see that as kind of accurate but apparently the the Zuck himself also has a has a big sweating problem and uh, he, he would uh, bring in not even just like employees or interns but other executives from Facebook to come in and blow dry his armpits before key events that the company was putting on uh, to make sure that he didn't sweat through his shirt. I, uh, <laughs> I, Facebook, yeah, as, as, everyone, as most people know, uh, have done some shady stuff over the, over the past couple of years. Mark Zuckerberg has had to defend himself in front of Congress a few times now. And uh, I, I guess he's, uh, it, it's wearing him down. He, he's, he's, and uh, he's worrying a lot about his self-image now. Now, er, 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 don't... <laughs> That about wraps up the show for today, but please let me know if you, if you see me on campus, if you follow me on social media, let me know. Would you blow dry Mark Zuckerberg's armpits if he asked you to? <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening to Kutztown Live this week. I really appreciate it. Make sure you catch Undeclared and Happy Hour next Monday at 5 and 6. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. I'll see you next week.